Now, LeVon Gracie and I met at the University of Miami. You heard that uh, from Carol Davis. And not only did we help to desegregate the University of Miami, we were roommates. So a lot of the uh, militancy that uh, I have, I learned it from you. <laughs> uh, let me introduce my roommate, Dr. LeVon <laughs> Well, I started out in school in St. Augustine, Florida. My father was uh, a minister, my mother was a school teacher, and my father was the president of the NAACP. Uh, he started having sit-ins at Woolworth in St. Augustine. And uh, as a result of all of his activities, my mother was fired from her job. Uh, the Ku Klux Klan put um, a bounty, I guess, on my dad, said that they were going to kill the whole family if he didn't stop all of his activities. And uh, it was rough living in St. Augustine. My mother then took a job in Bunnell, Florida. Within two years, they fired her there for my dad's activities. So it was, um, it was terrible in St. Augustine. Um, my mother says, well, I guess I'll, I'll never get another job. And she begged my father after the Ku Klux Klan um, put a burning in the front of our house and, and uh, the FBI called and said that it's dangerous for you just to stay in St. Augustine. So we left St. Augustine by the night. My uh, mother had us to lay down in the car because she said that if they bummed the car, they wouldn't see anybody but my dad in here. So my dad was called to a church in Gainesville, Florida. My mother I got another job teaching school in Gainesville. My dad promised my mother that he would not get involved in, in the civil rights and that we will have a nice life in Gainesville. So within four months, my dad was president of the <laughs> Gainesville. In Gainesville, my father, my mother was living. She said, I'm going to get fired again. So my dad said, no, no, it won't be as bad. So the first thing my dad did, he saw that the school system was not integrated. This was in 1964. Uh, and the, in 1950, was Brown versus the board. So he sued the school system to integrate a Lachery County school system. And the judge indicated that they had to in integrate with all deliberate speed. Well, Dad began to knock on doors trying to find African Americans that would allow their kids to go to the all-white school. He wanted to start out with the, the high school, which was Gainesville High School. He knocked on about 500 doors. He found uh, a 10th grader, 11th grader, and I was in the 12th grade. So my mother said, absolutely not. So my dad and I continued to conference and convince my mother that I should be uh, the person to go to Gainesville High School. Well, the FBI came back to the house and said that this was not a good move that they could not guarantee our safety, and that they could not guarantee that I would live through the year. Well, Dad would take me and the two others to school every morning. Uh, we would have a police escort in the front and a police escort in the back to take us to school. I knew from the first day that it was going to be a horrible year. I got out of the car after Dad prayed with us. As uh, soon as I got on the property, I started hearing the N-word. I got spit on every day. When I first got to my first class, I sat on the first row. And when I sat down, the whole class got up. And the teacher said, why are you standing up? And they said, well, I'd rather stand up than sit by me. So I knew that this was going to be a rough year. Every day that I would go to class, I'd have to look at my uh, chair because they would bring roaches and rats and the snakes and put in my chair. They would put tacks in it. And so my mother would bring me with 
a brown paper bag and she put some alcohol wrap so that I can clean the chair before I could sit down. So I did that. I, I, I think it was about 350 in my graduating class. I didn't have one person in that class that befriended me. I knew nobody's name other than if the teacher would have called their name. I am convinced that my class uh, had a pack that I would not be the first black to graduate. So whatever that they could do, they would make my life uncomfortable. If I would go to the um, cafeteria, the entire cafeteria would empty. If I go to the um, library, the entire library would empty. I was told I could not go to a basketball game, could not go to a football game, could not participate with the prom or anything that seniors would do because the uh, Gainesville police said that they couldn't guarantee my safety. So one day, do I have another minute? Okay. So one day, um, a phone came to my house selling vacuum cleaners. And my mother uh, was not at home. And my dad said, young man, is this your full-time job? He said, no, I'm a senior at Gainesville High. He said, oh, do you know my daughter, LaVon? He says, uh, no, I don't. He said, I know she's there, but I don't really know her. And so I talked with him. He says, listen, I promise you that your life is going to be better because I'm going to stop what's happening to you. So my dad felt real good. He said, LaVon, your life is about to change. I said, let's hope so. so he told the young man, he said, listen, uh, I can't buy this vacuum cleaner unless my wife uh, lets me. And he said, I need to find out if you need to come back to have another demonstration. He said, that I'll have LeVon see you first thing tomorrow in the morning and let you know if you need to come back. So dad said, you know. Her mom said, yes. So she said, find the young man and tell him I need another demonstration of a uh, vacuum cleaner. So at school, everybody's out in the courtyard until the bell rang. I found a young man, and I told him, I said, my daddy said, that's all I got to say. He says, um, nigga, I don't know you. Um, he threw me on the ground. All of the uh, kids, began to beat me. I, um, I bled profusely and they kicked me and I have stitches from my front to the back of my head. So I stumbled in the principal's office and the principal said, how I didn't know if you came from home like that. Oh. He said, I didn't see anything. I don't know anything. And he said, don't want my dad wants to do this to you. Oh. So across the street was a pay phone. I stumbled across the street, called my dad, told him I had been beat. He says, well, I'm coming to pick you up. Took me to the black doctor. He st stitched me up on my head. My dad said, you don't have to go back there. He says, you've done enough. Came home. I stayed home for about two weeks. And I said, dad, take me back to school. He said, I thought you weren't coming back. I said, you know what? They don't have to kill me. I'm going back. And I'm going to take whatever they have, and I'm going to graduate. So I went back to school. They redoubled their efforts. They made my life miserable. And at 68, it's still the worst year of my life. Um, I graduated the graduation 
was at um, McConnell's Center in Gainesville. And so many threads had been put on my life for graduation. They had the entire Alachua County a police department out there to make sure that um, I graduate without an incident. So I made it through that. And then Dad said, well, you made it. But I must admit, I left high school at age 16 hating white people because I could not understand at age 16 how could you treat somebody that way? They had done absolutely nothing to you. The only thing is the color of your skin. So I left there telling Dad I couldn't go to Gainesville. I could not go to the University of Florida. I needed some healing. So I went to Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee. Stayed there three and a half years. <laughs> left there and then went to University of Miami. And when I got to University of Miami, I had vowed that I would never be silent again. And I had vowed that I would never be mistreated again in my life. And that's when I began with voter registration. And that's when I began to realize that the only voice that I would have is my vote. I guess I talked enough. 